I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 28th of February, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life in Leon, Nicaragua. Let's get to the show. I'm actually recording today's show on March 4th, so I'm a little bit behind, but I've got some of the future episodes already recorded, so it's not as bad as it seems. It's 97 degrees today. I'm just a little bit on the warm side. Haven't gone to air conditioning, but I did have to turn on a fan. A little bit much, but uh, I'm actually heading out today on the 4th to meet a fan of the show, Rick. Gonna give him a shout out, and if Rick's wife is watching, hello. I've not seen him yet. I'm going to go right after I film this episode. Actually, so when he sees this, he'll be like, oh, that's when that happened. That's really cool. Anyway, so today, uh, not a lot going on. This whole week has been mostly a work week, so I'm not really covering the events of the week because there's nothing to say. So uh, today I really wanna talk about, because we did this trip to Ometepe recently, and uh, some people had some comments about it. You know, how do you take a car over on the ferry? I wish they would do this on the island and that and that. And I wanted to give a little bit of both a commentary kind of to people who are watching, but also to potentially the government of Nicaragua and those who live on uh, Ometepe and give them kind of my view and what I think the island should do. Now, keep in context, I am a extra in Harrow and my opinion is worth nil because I really don't understand all the economics and things that go on and the history and all the important things. So that's important. And I wanna do an episode in the near future where we talk about, um, funny enough, my watch has transcribed all that. I wanna talk about uh, uh, the, the outside views and the context here in Nicaragua because it is so easy to have this outsider's view. So I'm gonna do exactly the thing I say not to do, but at least I'm accepting that you should take it with a grain of salt. And then in a future upcoming episode pretty soon, I wanna talk about why that's so important that we be careful as foreigners with having this idea of, oh, you should do this thing, you should do that thing. Here, one of those, some of those things that come up a lot, people often see the like, oh, the, the, the toilet paper issues that people have here. Well, why don't you just, and they come up with a million things as if people hadn't thought of them. And oh, there's no hot water, and they come up with a million things as if people hadn't thought of them. All these things are, there's a lacking context when you're looking at the problem. So when I give things on, on Ometepe, uh, keep in mind, I have spent some time there and I've lived in Nicaragua for several years and I've come from the outside uh, and, and I'm trying my best to keep in mind the Nicaraguan context uh, and not look at this as a temporary foreigner who's trying to solve something. I'm actually looking at this as there is planning going on and trying to give my two cents. Anyway, what I fear is going to happen on Ometepe is that they are nearing the completion, and by nearing, I mean there's probably a year to go, they are nearing the completion of having the road completely pavered the whole way around. It is going to be beautiful. Uh, up until now, Ometepe has been relatively unreachable. Uh, the airport was cut off, so that could come back and that would work. Uh, and when you got to the island, you were heavily limited as to where you could go. You would need to take an ATV or hire a truck to take you around or whatever. And this curtailed the vast development of the island really rapidly uh, because if it was super easy to get to, let's say there was a bridge and that's something that people have said, well, why don't they just build a bridge? It's certainly buildable, although economically it makes no sense. If you look at the cost of similar bridges in places like Saudi Arabia or Japan who have built these massive bridges spanning many kilometers of water, they are connecting giant populations for huge economic growth you would have to move hundreds of thousands of people onto Ometepe to uh, justify having a bridge, and you would need those people to have large economic bases. It's primarily a retirement and uh, fishing and hippie island today with uh, essentially no economy because of those things. So doing that does not make financial sense. You would never be able to pay for that bridge. Even worse, you would never be able to keep up the maintenance on it. So it would eventually fall down and it would cause a huge tragedy and a giant loss of revenue. It would just be terrible. So that's obviously something that, that can't happen. But the idea is neat. Like, oh, could you build a bridge? I suppose. Like, it's, it's not so far that you couldn't. But uh, things like that. So my concern is that with the upcoming uh, creation of this beautiful road, the entire island is suddenly going to be accessible. And there's going to be this really strong drive to move from scooters and uh, ATVs and taxis to owning cars and driving all over the island. And of course, it's already pushing its capacity for traffic because it is a tiny island with tiny roads. If we start putting many more cars on the road, you're gonna run into a lot of problems caused by that. This dog is just being so cute that I have to film him. I, it's, I just love how they come out and they pick the most random places to lay out in the yard and in all around the house. They have so much space that they just kind of make the whole house their own. 
and you never know where you're going to find them and what you're going to find them doing. It's just they, they add so much like life to the both the inside and the outside space because sometimes they lay in the doorway, sometimes they lay in the middle of the living room, sometimes they find a bedroom somewhere and just go sleep on their own, and sometimes they're in the middle. Sometimes I find them out by the front gate. Like it's so it's so funny. Um, and so I really worry that Ometepe is going to turn into this huge parking lot and this ecological disaster as too many people move to the island and it becomes overrun, overrunning its water supply, overrunning its food supply, needing the ferry to go t twice as often, creating a problem at the ports, uh, needing to ship food around the island. There's a lot of things that will scale up really quickly and create problems. Of course, they can mitigate some of that by putting a port on the far eastern side of the island. Uh, they can mitigate some of that in different ways. But that's really what I think needs to be done is this consideration for how do we make Ometepe much more ecological, uh, kind of take a Costa Rican, make it, make it an ecological preserve kind of way, because Ometepe is not just a, a really big potential for tourism, it's also a national treasure, and it's really a global treasure. It should essentially be an UNESCO World Heritage site, except it's a little bit different than that, but it should be some kind of ecological site where we really recognize that this is something really important and unique, and we need to preserve it in some sort of way. And it's really easy for something so small but so, so beautiful to be just overrun overnight. Uh, because a road is completed and ferries take cars and suddenly the whole place is destroyed and the and the water table is destroyed and the place is uh, um, contaminated and, and no one can go there anymore and there's no reason to go there anymore. It's just ruined. And I think what I envision as being kind of a perfect situation there is one, yes, getting this beautiful paved road everywhere and making the people who are on the island able to spread out. Being able to grow the island by 20 or 30 or even 40 percent, adding tens of thousands more people to the island, yes, I think that's, that's viable, um, but, but having them spread out, new, new major villages on the far eastern side, for example, possibly adding a, another port so that traffic is divided and people are not spending so much time traveling the entire length of the island to get to and from a ferry. Those are some things that could lower the overall traffic. Of course, having ferries that go to San uh, Carlos again, having ferries that go to Granada again, those things would help. Um, I think uh, obviously things like bridges, I think, are out. Reopening the airport would probably be good in general. But I think public transportation is really key. And there is public transportation on the island, at least to some degree today, with chicken buses. And I don't think that that really does a good job of accommodating the tourist traffic. I think that smaller, more comfortable, more expensive public transportation designed around tourists or potentially private transportation is the answer at lower speeds. I think one of the problems that we need to look at with the island is that high speed cars are actually problematic. I would love to see enough money to have something like a tramway go around the island, but that would be outrageously expensive. That would be a perfect world, but it's not realistic uh, to put in rails or anything of the sort. A monorail going around the island would be so cool, but not realistic. But what is potentially realistic is something like a battery powered or a hydrogen powered or other very green low speed, meaning 20 to 30 miles an hour uh, um, tourist tram. One of those ones that has someone driving and they've got speakers that explain where you're going and it's very easy to hop on hop off and you buy day passes and it just works its way around the island in a pattern and you're able to you know flag them down show your pass get on and maybe you spend five dollars a day to have that transport and it just goes around the island all day long and they have multiple ones it only would take a few and that would allow for a uh, very low um, impact to the to the island it would create jobs uh, it would help spread people out and it would keep tourists from needing to bring cars to the island we don't want the ferries to suddenly become overloaded with cars. We don't want it to be a challenge to get the trucks to and from the island. We don't want to make the, the island full of cars because it'll just become this terrible experience. The calm, beautiful beaches will be destroyed. The serene environment will be gone. And the thing that makes people love Ometepe, the thing that makes it unique and special, will cease to exist if we're not careful. And so I think some really simple things to reduce cars instead of increase cars, to make the roads less busy instead of more busy, to uh, allow people to be spread out easily without encouraging a massive uh, accumulation of vehicles, and 
perhaps even limiting vehicles on the island to those who are residents or to those who actually are residents of the island property owners of the island, those with long-term rental agreements on the island, or possibly eliminating cars altogether except for necessary commercial traffic. Uh, actually, I think just going to nothing but taxis and, and the, obviously the delivery trucks are, is realistic, and then having lower speed vehicles, I'm not saying have nothing, but to then mandate, because it is an island, because the maximum distance is very small, because the average distance is tiny, going to extremely efficient vehicles, that are uh, powered not by fuels that have to be uh, brought over from the mainland, especially could be extremely valuable um, and lower the cost of life on the island while increasing the quality of life, reducing the size of parking lots, allowing the island to focus more on its beaches and its uh, produce and its, uh, its scenery and its mountains and its clean water and all those things, and less focus on how to get enough fuel, get enough landfill, ship trash on and off the island, uh, and those kinds of things, um, I think that there is a real potential. And I think for very little money or possibly less money than is being spent today, they could make the island into even more of a paradise and make it even more of a tourist destination and make people willing to pay more to go there because it's that much more special. And in general, I tend to be very anti-car. Um, I think that all, especially coming from the US, we have seen how much damage happens when you encourage cars. And when you come to Nicaragua, I think you see how valuable having fewer cars is. It's one of the things that makes Nicaragua so much nicer than the surrounding countries. The moment you step into another country, you're like, oh, it's so ugly. Why is it so ugly? It's the cars. It's the, it's the amount of traffic you have to deal with. It's the number of parking lots you have to deal with. It's the amount of just cars everywhere that you have to accommodate. There's a way to get rid of that. And Nicaragua is in a really unique position, not just with Ometepe, but in general, but Ometepe especially, to say, well, we, uh, much like how Europe developed an amazing train infrastructure and did so because they weren't too early. The United States got into trains very early and built them before they really knew the ramifications and they really knew what they were gonna be able to do and really knew the ways they're gonna be able to use them. And so they put the trains in kind of the wrong spots and they developed in kind of a bad way and Europe was able to plan much better for them and has a much more uh, beautiful, effective rail infrastructure because of it. They also have a different landscape that makes it much more logical as well. It's not completely that, but the, the early adoption of trains hurt America in many ways. And um, the same thing with cars. The United States is designed around being a place to collect cars, and now they're stuck with that. Moving away from cars would be extremely hard. Much of the world has already moved to a heavy car infrastructure, but Nicaragua has not. And it sits in this really important position in time where they have an opportunity to step back and say, wait, we don't want to encourage cars. We don't want to do everything we can to put more cars on the road and catch up with other countries that have screwed themselves over and destroyed their beauty and made their whole world just a parking lot. We have an opportunity now because we've waited to become heavy on cars that we could now step in with more public transportation, which already has fantastic public transportation. We could limit the, the use of the roads. We could raise taxes on the cars. We could discourage the use of fuels and independent vehicles and encourage the use of public transportation and shared vehicles and ride sharing and taxis and those sorts of things. Move to more fuel efficient vehicles, move to alternative vehicles like trams or golf cart style things, other low speed, very safe vehicles that are really tourist friendly, really interesting and attractive. The country is so small and has such a small population that kind of taking an almost Disney World like approach of how do we do cost effective, really interesting, beautiful tourist centric stuff, but extend that so that it's not just for tourists, but it includes uh, Nicaraguans as well and create this beautiful, amazing uh, country that is more uh, ecologically sound, more tourism sound, and for those of us who live here, also better for us with better road safety, less congestion, lower cost overall, being able to get from place to place. They've done such an amazing job already. I would hate to see that disappear or be wasted just because of a little bit of progress that happened all of a sudden and deciding that, well, everyone else has destroyed their countries in this way, we should destroy it the same way too. There is an opportunity. And I think Ometepe is the shining example of because it's an island, and because it's so small that this could be done there isolated from everything else, no matter what it's isolated from everything else. If the rest of the country went car free, Ometepe could still be full of cars or vice versa. It's isolated. But um, I think Ometepe has this amazing opportunity to actually 
push towards being car free, go to pure public transportation, make a really great, safe, cheap, revenue generating tourism and tax based system that would make the entire island so much more interesting and cost less to do so. That is my feeling. I think there's an opportunity and that's the way the island should be looking towards extreme ecological tourism, towards extreme uh, preservation of the island and towards limiting uh, development, commercial development. Of course, we still want hotels. We still want Airbnbs. We still want, um, um, you know, farm stays and restaurants. And we want things with tourism infrastructure and beaches and bars and dance clubs and those kinds of things. We want a certain amount of stuff. We want to be able to go there and go, this is fun. It's fun to go for the day. It's fun to spend the night. There's ways to do it. You're not going to be stuck and be like, what do I do? But to curtail that and make it not about being becoming a parking lot and becoming a big commercial just copy of everything else it's already unique let's keep it unique let's do things that make sense just for Ometepe. thanks for joining me please remember to like and subscribe if you have any comments what do you think what do you do you have ideas about Ometepe or other places how do we preserve this country how do we leverage the fact that we already are so much more car free than other countries and why that's such a big part of why we love it here. It's one of those things that people don't realize what they get here and they're like, something is so awesome about Nicaragua. And one of those aspects is the lack of cars. Get down in those comments. Let me know. If you'd like to support this channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to help me pay for the cameras and the GoPro subscriptions and the uh, tools that I need to make this show. Uh, all the motion VFX stuff, the music, the epidemic sound, the art list. And, uh, and as always, share on social media. Put it on you know, Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram and Reddit and all those things. Let people know. Get the word out. Go you know, implore some people to give it a try and see what they think. And I will see all of you in March tomorrow.